Please rise and turn to the back. Before we begin our worship service, our congregation's um, chief elder, head elder, Kerry Greshel, has a few things he wants, he needs to say about the voters' meeting. <clears throat> Just per the bylaws, we have to make the announcement that we have our voters' meeting next week, uh, May 23rd at 1145, so right after um, second service. Uh, main business will be election of officers and approving the budget for next year. Um, so please plan to join us, either just stay after this service or, or, or come back if you want to go to early service next week. So see you then. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, with that, we, uh, we will begin our worship for this ascension.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We pray silently to the Lord. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy upon us, Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world for the well-being of the Church of God and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. pray. Almighty God, as your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, ascended into the heavens, so may we also ascend in heart and mind and continually dwell there with him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated.
Good morning. The first reading comes from the first chapter of Acts, beginning with verse 1. In the first book, O Theopolis, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up, after he had given command through the Holy Spirit to the apostles to whom he had chosen. To them he presented himself alive after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, Will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. The epistle reading is taken from the first chapter of Ephesians, beginning with the 15th verse. For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the Lord of our, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above our rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Then he said to them, these, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am ascending the promise of my Father upon you, 
but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany and lifted up his hands and he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple blessing God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated as we sing. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus, the crucified, the risen, and the ascended Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us begin. Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here this day, a special day. We used to have a whole night dedicated to this day, but due to many changes, here we are. Lord, help us to catch the grandeur of this day to realize what this day is about and why Ascension Day is so important and why this day is so important not only to your church then, but certainly to your church now. So bless us, Lord. Bless us and keep us, your people. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. This is our text. And uh, I I just want to say that I'm pretty excited about this message. I hope it doesn't flop. Okay. Okay. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. 
And here's the part I really want to focus on. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. Wow. Wow. I want you to think about ascension in a, in a different way than displaying the power of God right away. I want to look at some of the images, and I want you to capture some of the images in your head. You have this, this three years with Jesus, and then he dies on the cross, and then miraculously he rises from the grave, and for 40 days he walks with his people. And he appears here, and he appears here, and there's smatterings of his appearances. So much we're told that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we're told that more than 500 people who were still alive when that book was written, they had seen the resurrected Jesus. So you can't just cut it like it's some sort of, uh, they had a hallucination. Hallucinations don't work like that. Jesus rose from the grave. You got to deal with that. But now comes the big part, the ascension. What's this about? Well, look at these images, and this will help us. First, there's the cloud. Now, what do you know about clouds? In the Old Testament, clouds were essential to a lot of ways that God revealed himself. When God um, revealed himself to to Moses, and especially to the people that Moses was leading, God appeared as a cloud during the day and a pillar of fire by night to alert the people that he was with them. When Moses spoke to God, it was speaking to God in a cloud. Why? Why? Because God in his glory is so bright and so righteous that Moses would have probably exploded or something like that if he would have been in the grandeur of God one-on-one. So what did God do? He created clouds. Now clouds are kind of cool. When we see clouds in Houston, we imagine it's raining somewhere else. Because what I've learned about living here is we don't get much rain. But everywhere else seems to get it. But I see the clouds, and I'm thinking, oh, there's going to be rain today. And I start putting things away, only to have a day that just gets muggy, and there's no rain. But clouds are interesting. It wasn't until I was late in my teen years, I believe, that I flew for the first time ever. And I remember the first time that plane went and lifted over the clouds, and I couldn't believe it how open everything was and how clear everything was. Whereas just when we were underneath the clouds, I was flying out of Tampa, and so just as we were underneath the clouds, it was raining and doing the normal Tampa drizzle, and not, which is like 30 minutes, pull your car to the side of the road kind of rain. And then all of a sudden, I was in this, and the clouds didn't, the clouds hid that from me. Okay? In life, God is with you. That's what the, these clouds tell you. A cloud can be a good reminder, like a rainbow is a reminder. A rainbow is a reminder that God will never flood the earth again. A cloud can be a reminder that God's glory is present. It's clear. It's, it's close by. The proximity is here. Because a cloud is where God likes to be. And Jesus now is on all of his glory. And so what does he do? We're told a cloud is present again. Why? to protect the disciples from seeing all that glory at once and probably exploding or whatever we do. But a cloud, a cloud, is, is, it hides a lot and yet reveals God is here. Maybe you feel like you're under a cloud right now. <clears throat> huh. Perhaps that cloud's not as lonely as you perhaps thought. Maybe there's a little glory that's laced in that silver lining. Maybe God is doing something with you right now that you're not even aware of because you're so focused on the cloud and not the glory that can come through the cloud. I know I get like that at times. I know I get like that more times than I care to. The next thing, lifting up. You know, one thing that's cool about this world, and no matter if you go to China or you go to, to Europe or you go to the United States, if I drop this, it always goes to the earth. It doesn't matter if I'm all the way on the other side of the earth, it still likes to go to earth. Everything, according to Isaac Newton and many others before him and after him, says gravity affects everything. But here's a different way of looking at this. Jesus was lifted up. And look what kind of things put him in the ground, okay? His coming brought him to the ground to become like one of us in every way, yet without sin. He was grounded. And then when he died, he was lifted up, but then he was placed in the ground when he died. But now he's lifted up again. And this is what Jesus is all about. He's the God that makes things the reverse of what they should be. Whereas everything should fall and stay down, Jesus didn't just fall and stay down. 
Remember, this is the same one who took two fish and five loaves of bread, fed 5,000 plus people. He does things that don't make earthly sense. Here's the one who walked on water, who stilled the waters with his voice. Here's the one who dealt with people of all sicknesses, people who were even born with certain sicknesses, and he reversed that order as well. And then there's the demons who thought they had all the power. And what happened? Jesus encountered them, and he took that power away from them, even sometimes taking them and throwing them into pigs and other things to show them how powerful he is. Jesus is the one who lifts up even when everything wants to bring down. Uh, sometimes I feel a little down, a gloomy. And then I got to remember that the one who everything was on him, the whole world's problems were on him, all the sin of the world was on him, and that couldn't even keep him down. It's good to remember. Good to remember. The last one is waiting. I would say we as North Americans are lousy at this. How do I, why do I say that? Well, when you're in a line at a grocery store and there's three people in front of you and the one lady pulls out all her quarters and she's going to go through that, what's one thing I notice people doing? They're not reading the magazines on the shelf, buying into that nonsense anymore. They're pulling out their phones. And we find a way to use these distractions. I'm very good at it. I've got games aplenty on my phone and I can play them anytime. I don't like to wait around. I, don't, I like to stay busy. I don't, I don't find as much time as I would like. When I, had, when I lived in British Columbia and I lived surrounded by mountains, I found lots of times to wait on God. Just did. Things shut down at 6 o'clock at night sometimes. You, you have lots of time to wait. But bustling in a city, it's hard to wait on God. It's, it's everything so now. You know, even when your channel clicker changes your channels a little slow on the TV, you start to think the world is exploding. <laughs> What's going on here? This isn't working. Paul Tillich, a theologian in the, in the last century, a Lutheran guy, and he wrote this, and I think this is powerful. These are the people who don't know how to wait. I think of the theologian who does not wait for God because he possesses him enclosed within his studies and doctrine. I've had a lot of questions lately about Pastor, what's all this stuff with doctrine and all that? Well, the person is bringing this out in their question that what happens is sometimes people don't want to be in a relationship with Jesus. They don't want everything that entails. They want to keep God where they can control him. And sometimes theologians are the worst at that. We can put God in so many boxes that we can store him away and keep him where we want him. And I try to remind my Christian brothers and sisters who are in the parish work and church work and school work that our God is a very dynamic God. And sometimes those boxes we try to keep him in, we, the way we try to control him, he, he likes to burst forth. I think of the biblical student who does not wait for God because he possesses him enclosed in a book. Or I think of the churchman who does not wait for God because he possesses him enclosed in an institution. I'm Lutheran, I'm Baptist, I'm Methodist, I'm Catholic. I think of the believer who does not wait for God because he possesses him enclosed within his own limited insular experience. God wants us to wait on him. But many times when I have people come to me and they want to leave the church, it's not because our doctrine's messed up. I'd never hear that. They're like, oh, what we... It's because the things that they expect from God aren't happening in a time that they desire them to happen. I hear it all the time. Things aren't happening around here, Pastor. I think I need to go to another church. Okay. Aren't you going to fight for me? Doesn't sound like there's much of a fight there. You've made a decision how God should work. You've already told me the theology of the church is fine. Why don't you want to wait and see what God wants to do with you? See, we've got a problem. We're very busy people. We pride ourselves in being busy, actually. The fuller the calendar, the less of a fool we think we are. Yet in God's kingdom, that's not how it works. The ascension reminds us of this. The ascension reminds us not only of the cloud and the glory of God close to us. The ascension not only reminds us, okay, that what... That, that, 
all things don't necessarily go down, but things are lifted up and reversed in Jesus Christ. But the ascension reminds us to wait on God. The disciples had to wait, and the disciples today have to wait. Get on our knees and pray. Ask him to show us where we need to do and what we need to be. We're getting ready to start some committees soon. Uh, we're having a voters meeting this month, next week. And in that voters meeting, we're trying to get our stewardship board and our evangelism board and our, our fellowship board and all these committees working, functioning. We've had a COVID year, which has been kind of a crazy, the, 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 the things aren't cranking together and it's just wild stuff. And we've been blessed by God in so many wonderful ways, but now it's time to get a little more intentional. Okay, And we're, not going to get, we're going to get intentional by not getting busier. We're going to get intentional by being more of the people that know God from the ascension. We're going to realize he's with us the whole trip. We're also going to realize that, that you know, that we got to wait. We got to listen. But we also need to realize that things aren't necessarily the way we seem to think things are with our eyes. Sometimes God is doing things in our midst as he reverses the order of things and puts things right again. See, the world is upside down, not God. And what Jesus did is he showed us the right way. But he didn't just show us. He gave us the right way. He gave us himself. So the ascension is just another way that the power of God illuminates the person and message of Jesus Christ and reveals God as he wants to be revealed. So I was pretty excited about this message. I hope you're excited. I hope you're excited about clouds. I hope you're excited about things not always falling down in Christ. And I hope you're excited to wait in Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for Jesus Christ. We thank you for the power that you give us and the love that you give us. Help us, Lord, in that power, in that love. Help us to be more of a presence in this world. Help us to reveal to the world what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ as we live under the ascension power of the cloud, the lifting up and the waiting. Help us, Lord, better be better disciples, not only in public, but also in our private lives. Help us, Lord, be faithful. Help our relationship with you grow. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us stand and let us share in the confession of our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. Together we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now we go into the prayers. Today we have several people that we want to remember. First of all, we want to remember Bernie Yarborough, 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 Wybargan, thank you. Bernie Wybargan's brother, Robert, and that his his wife, June, had died on, on the uh, Wednesday, the 10th. And so they're going to be having a committal service on the 21st, on Friday. And so prayers for him and comfort for him and for, for Bernie. Also, for Yvette Paradin, this is the daughter of Richard and Vernell Keating. 
She's going to be having surgery at MD Anderson. It's robotic surgery. It's pretty serious. And it's very sensitive. It's for the removal of her spleen and part of and the growth that is on her pancreas. And she's going to be in the hospital for about four days. So just for healing grace and blessings and for her recovery. Also, we have the, um, the blessings of, of the continual blessings for um, Scott Lockhart and Dave Brown. Dave's going to try to be in service today. And also for Carol Hager, Louis Alessi, who is still on, on hospice care, and for my mother-in-law, Paula Walcott. We go to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Ascended Lord Jesus Christ, we rejoice as we bring our prayers to your throne of grace. We pray for the whole Christian church, that through it the will of God be done among us on earth, and that in it we may rejoice in hearing the good news of the gospel. Ascended Lord in your mercy. As all things on this earth are under your feet, we pray for the nations of the world and for those who lead them that justice, security, and peace be known around the globe by your mercies, provisions, and grace. Ascended Lord in your mercy. We pray for the church and for this congregation that we use wisely the time and all resources you have given us, accomplishing your will to further your mission by the power of your Holy Spirit. Ascended Lord in your mercy. We pray for those with special needs facing trials and troubles in spirit and or body, and all those whose cares and challenges are concerned to us, especially for Bernie and for her brother Robert, for Yvette, for Genesis Simak on bed rest, for Scott and Dave and Carol and Lewis, and for Pauline. We pray you, Lord, bless and strengthen them all. Give them your healing grace and bless them, especially bless Yvette in her surgery that she comes out just fine in all that she needs to do. And bless the committal service for um, Brother Robert's wife, June. Bless that committal service and give them the peace and the joy of Jesus always. Bless us all, Lord. Strengthen us and give us your joy. Assure them and us of your continuing presence in their lives and in our lives also for the times in our lives when we wonder if Jesus is enough. Remind us that because of Christ's ascension, his presence remains each day as he continually pours out his gifts of grace, mercy, and forgiveness. Ascended Lord in your mercy. Amen. With gratefulness, Ascended Lord, we thank you for the faithful witness of those no longer with us here on earth. We rejoice in your eternal care. Inspire us by their faithful witness and help us to serve you and others in love all our days. Ascended Lord, in your mercy. Amen. In your hands, O Lord, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, the Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.